The design of dead legs play a major role in preventing Legionella in your plumbing designs. In this video, we'll take a look at what important factors you need to consider and go through some tips on how to minimize the risk. Let's start by understanding what a dead leg is. It is the branch of pipe that connects directly from a fixture, either to the recirculation system or all the way back to the hot water heater. And in between uses, the water in this pipe will go cold, which means next time you use it, you have to flush out all that cold water before the hot water starts to come out. And you want to keep dead legs to a minimum because it uses or wastes a lot of water. It'll also use and waste energy and it will provide a nice breeding ground for Legionella, which you want to avoid. And there are three parts to a dead leg calculation, which you can see on the screen here. You have the flow rate, which is governed by the fixture, so it's not really within your control. You then have the pipe diameter. So the larger the pipe, the more volume of water is in the dead leg. So you wanna keep the pipe size to a minimum as much as possible. And there's also the length, which you want to minimize too. So the longer the pipe, again, there's gonna be more volume. So these three things combined will give you your dead leg volume. So that's the internal pipe diameter multiplied by the length. And then if you divide that volume by the flow rate, you'll get your wait time. I just want to show a couple of examples here. If we come back to the design and add some extra length onto the dead leg, we can see straight away that the dead leg volume has increased and the wait time has increased too. So just highlighting that you want the pipe layout to be as direct as possible. And as another example, let's say we want to increase this pipe size to 40 millimeters. Once again, you can see the volume has increased um, like 33% just from that small pipe being upsized. Next, we'll take a look at a typical room layout for an ensuite, which you'll find is very common in countries like Australia. So you'd have the TMV centrally located to the room. That'll be around a meter, a meter and a half above the floor. The pipes would then branch off, go in to supply the different fixtures. And it typically runs about three meters above the ceiling. And then we'll drop down to about one meter in the wall and connect to the fixtures. And whilst this design layout works, there is room for improvement from a Legionella aspect. The first improvement relates to promoting water flow through the dead leg. In this layout, even if the basin is being used frequently, if the shower doesn't get used, there's quite a big portion of the dead leg that's going to get stagnant over a period of time. So an improved layout would be to connect the basin downstream at the shower. And what this means is that every time the basin is used, it's going to flush much more of the dead leg and the remaining dead leg that's connected to the shower is minimized significantly. As discussed earlier, minimizing the pipe runs is critical for reducing dead legs. And one of the best ways to do this is by looking at what height the pipes are running at. So here, as we come out the TMV, the pipes are running at three meters, but then dropping down to one meter to connect to both fixtures. And we can see this basin here that gives us a dead leg volume of 1.47. The length is 12.46 and the wait time is 14.66 seconds. If we just go in now and make changes to this pipe room. So we'll run them all at one meter instead of three. And just from that one change, we can now see at the basin, the dead leg volume is down to 1.04. That's because the length is reduced to 8.46 and the wait time is now only 10.43 seconds. And the last thing we're going to look at here is the pipe sizing. So you want to optimize for the smallest pipes possible because that will give you the smallest volume and the least wait time. But you do also have to be aware that smaller pipes will have higher friction loss resulted in less pressure at your fixture. So in this example, the warm water pipes have a maximum velocity of 1.5 meters per second, which is resulting in a 16 millimeter pipe. But on the hot water system, we have a 1.2 meter per second maximum velocity, and that's given us a 20 millimeter pipe. And if we look at the basin again, the volume here is 1.04 liters. And because this change is going to affect the pressure as well, let's turn that on at the fixture. 
So you can see we're getting 374.7 kPa. So let's look now if we go in and let's say for example, we want to look at increasing the velocity of this one pipe from 1.2 to 1.5, which will give us a 16 millimeter pipe and it reduces the dead leg down below one liter to 0 0.89 and it's only had a minimal effect on the pressure where we have lost around five kPa. So now we have 369.68. So it is well worth doing if your project has enough pressure. And of course you want to stay inside the limits of the standard for velocities and pressures. I hope you found that helpful. And if you want to find more content similar to this, please head over to h2xengineering.com.